Greetings, and welcome back to the MCOC Encyclopedia. Today, as promised, we'll be going through the path from 7.1.2 that I recommended in my previous video with the teams I recommended using. This will allow you to get a little more insight into why I chose these teams and how I play around the nodes. This will be much more relaxed, but I still suggest you go and watch the first video first if you haven't already, as it contains most of the key information around this quest. And with that, let's jump in. So, here we are in 7.1.2, and we will be taking the Red Skull Path. The team today is 565 Mags, 6 star rank 3 Odin, 6 star rank 3 Red Goblin, 6 star rank 3 Venompool, and 6 star rank 4 Human Torch for the boss. First up against Red Skull, we will be using Venompool, who is one of my favourite Red Skull counters. You could absolutely use any other decent armor breaker for this fight, and I think Corvus Glaive is probably one of the best, as just with one parry, goodbye all the armors. However, the reason... Ooh, gotta watch out for the Mixed Master Evade there. But the reason Venompool is so good for this is because you can do this. I only got two out of three regens on there, but that's still almost 1,000 per tick, and we're back up to a full yellow bar. Easy as that. Now, wait out the auto block. And then we're just going to be doing that for the rest of the fight. I picked up my Vicious buff, which is the yellow one. Don't know why I didn't throw a special one there, but never mind. Picked up that Vicious buff so our bleeds will be doing extra damage. There we go, with extra Furies. Heal up. The regen is just so good, and this fight is not the fastest. But Venompool took a couple of blocks here. Doesn't matter. Venompool is just so tanky against this Red Skull. Another option I could have here is to grab some buffs, like I'm doing. There we go, get my Vicious buff again and then go for the special 3, and then just use that bleed to absolutely tick down pretty much anyone. The bleed on Venompool's special 3 is one of the nastiest in the entire game. So, just going around again, just sticking to baiting the special ones. They're not too difficult to heavy counter, sticking with medium light medium combos, and then if we need to regen, there we go, just grab one for nearly 500 per tick per regen. Heavy counter the special one, he can't auto block the heavy attacks, just be careful you don't go for two heavies in a row if he throws two specials back to back. And every time we're just baiting out heavies, we're not worrying about block damage at all because there's no need to. We can just heal it all back. There we go. So we're going in again. Medium light, medium combo so he can't evade. There we go. Just tick it out. Like, it's a 3.6k bleed from a 6 star rank 3. And we finish on a full yellow bar. Very, very smooth. Venompool versus Red Skull. Up next... Who have we got next? Black Panther. OG Black Panther. Not the most difficult of defenders, but we just have to keep an eye out for what's going on. Here we'll be applying our Odin buffs, which means we're most likely bringing in Red Goblin. He loves having buffs on him, and the more, the merrier. Got to remember Cosmic Avalanche on this node as well, which means if we get to our special 2, we get extra damage, particularly with Red Goblin. Well, sorry. Cosmic Avalanche gives Fury buffs on any special, but if you have access to lots of Fury buffs, Red Goblin Special 2 hits extra, extra hard. So that's where we're just trying to get to here. All I want to do now is throw my Special 1. There we go. And I've gained a little bit of power, so I've netted about a quarter of a bar of power. So we're just going to take a few Special 1s to get to that Special 2. And I was debating, do I just tank some of the damage? We can always heal it back with a couple of potions after the fight. But... We'll have to see. You can see here with four buffs on my Red Goblin, those are some 1,000 per tick incinerates, which is not bad at all. And maybe if I was taking this path again, just spamming heavy attacks to Special 2 might not be a bad way to go. There, that was a mistake. I should have gone for Special 2 there, but um, we live and we learn. So here we go, building back up our power. And these fights aren't the fastest, though that was some 10k bursts there, which is very nice. Not the fastest fights, but they are pretty reliable and safe. Mix Master is really going to keep the fights be low, because you can't often go for your big combos. There we go, we've got some really nice incinerates ticking now. Luckily caught him on the second part of that special, uh, the heavy attack, sorry. And here we go, six furies, now he can't evade, because we've got our frenzy up. Or it reduces the ability accuracy for it. And this fight is over in one more special. That was a 20k crit, very, very nice from Red Goblin. As I said, these fights will be quite a bit slower, simply because you just have to take them slower. There'll be lots of throwing heavy attacks, lots of medium light mediums, and so on. In this fight, we absolutely could have used Venompool. Dr. Octopus gets one armor up, so that's more than enough to keep us topped up. 
but instead we will be using Odin. How do you ramp up Odin? Four knockdowns. They can be you, or they can be him, and let's just pretend that I took that knockdown uh, at the start, just to ramp up a bit faster. But you can see I've got my five energized now, which means I get an extra power gain, which means I can now go medium light medium into my special one, which gives me access to true strike. Now, no more of eight. So we go back to two Odin force charges, and here we're just trying to bait the special two. I'm trying to stay in close, because when you stay in close with Odin, your buffs are paused. So there we go, bait that out. Can't quite uh, punish it on time, but we can just use it whatever we want, and he can't evade us. We've got a little bit left on that true strike, just enough. See, evade failed. I should have gone in for the special two there. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I didn't, but oh well. Here we go. Dex out of that special two. Here I have lost my true strikes, so got to be careful, so one medium. We've got a whole bunch of buffs, it's going to hit very nicely. So it was a 40k burst on the end of that, not bad at all. The red damage on Odin's special two scales with the opponent's max health. So if you take champions into, say, Labyrinth or Necropolis or Abyss, whatever, that burst will be much bigger because the champion's health is higher up. So there we go, we've gone, we've sort of got our ramp up going again. And at this point, I think I've kind of debated, is it worth going? for the special one again, but we can just go medium light, medium into special two, and that's pretty much going to close out the fight. Not quite enough, he's got 3%, but a very cheeky stand-up intercept, and that's the fight closed out in about 90 seconds. Really not too bad for health pools of this size with these sort of champions. Up next, we have Silver Surfer, and who are we taking in for him? Venom Pool is an absolutely stellar option, because again, Silver Surfer can generate armor ups, which means Venom Pool can heal like a madman. So, there we go, we got slightly unlucky where I've got a slow input, and he's being not particularly cooperative. Nice lag spike on my end. And we get our first buff with Venipool. Note that but even though we have Mixmaster, your hits don't really count whilst the opponent is stunned. So you can go for a full medium light light medium combo, as long as you get the first three hits whilst the opponent is stunned. All the game sees is stunned, 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 light medium. And nothing in there is the same attack twice, so you just have to be very careful. When he's not stunned, go for medium light medium, though I threw a heavy there to get the malice buff, and that will increase my damage over time. So then it pulls bleeds. We do also have the armor breaks that come off Silver Surfer's, Surfer's special attacks when he or his heavy attacks when he has the power cosmic available. Nice crit there. There we go, we get a nice power gain buff with Venipool because our dance off the special two was interrupted. Baiting out special two, try not to get hit by it. Very tricky one if you get that spacing slightly wrong. And we're back at a special two with Venom Pool. So what we'd like to do is if we can complete that dance, we'll double our buffs. But I've realized that actually we can probably make it to special three, as long as we don't get smacked. So we're just going to go parry, heavy attack, we're at special three. So this will trigger Venom Pool's Mega Bleed. And even without much of an increase, that's 6k per tick. And this is a six star rank three. Imagine what we could boost that to if we got him properly ramped up, which he isn't. Max him out. Oh, there's so much we could do with that bleed. But there we go. Silver Surfer bleeds out. Unfortunately, we didn't get much healing off those uh, armor up buffs, but we do what we can. Energy refill. Up next, we have Guillotine 2099. Absolutely, again, we could use Venom Pool here, or we could use Odin, or we could use Red Goblin. But guess what? We are going to use Venom Pool. Why? Well, Guillotine has armor, so we can regen. But she also has Power Drain on her special one. This is really, really annoying, and I really don't like fighting Guillotine because of it. It makes getting your specials off very difficult. But as long as we have our Clintar buff with Venom Pool, we're immune to power modification from tech champions. And there it is. So we started with the Precision, but I threw a heavy attack to re-roll it, got the Clintar buff, and you can see that our uh, power is not being drained by her specials. Now, you might say, well, Venom Pool applies Bleat, which is not very good versus robots. But against tech champions that are bleed immune, he instead applies degens. So we don't have to worry about that at all. This makes Venipool an excellent counter. And particularly once he gets ramped up, his damage is also very, very good. And against armor up opponents, he's practically immortal. Unless she can reverse your healing like that, which is a little bit annoying. But never mind, to avoid those. Waiting out Guillotine's Digicloak because I didn't knock her down enough. Venipool is a little bit slower for these fights because he is a ramp-up champion. Once you get your five buffs, which you can see at the top, which has the Clintar, the Malice, the Precision, the Hunter Spider, and the Energize, the Black, the Brown, the Yellow, the Pink, and the Purple. Once you get all of those, every time your cookie meter goes round, you instead get a Fury. 
those furies stack as high as you like, as long as you can keep them there, and they also have their potency increased from the malice buff. So actually, Venompool can hit really, really hard once you get him ramped up. And he takes out that fight, no issues as well, and we get a good bit of healing. Last up on the path, we have Emma Frost. She can be a little bit annoying, but as long as we can armor break her, she can't go into her diamond form. No diamond form, no stun immunity. That makes everything a bit simpler. Red Goblin can apply armor breaks, so we'll be using him here. This fight can be a little bit tricky, because if you can't stun her, you have to be very careful about Mixmaster. So perhaps just baiting heavies and going medium light, and then just back off, bait heavy, medium light, back off, bait heavy, medium light, means you can do whatever you need to to get her down, because she'll never evade if you're just going medium light. We've now got some extra buffs, but what we really need is a Fury buff in order to gain that armor break. So here we can see the uh, incinerates ticking pretty nicely, but as soon as she throws that special and she goes back into her diamond form, then we can't incinerate her because she's immune to a lot of stuff. So what I'm trying to do here is just push to my special 2. If I can get to my special 2, then I can start armor breaking and we are going to do some serious damage. So we're just bouncing around, being very careful of when she evades, her reverse controls on her special attacks, and we're nearly there. We've got 3 hits to get to special 2, so medium, light... There we go. So we do end up taking the degen damage. Not a big deal. Now look at that incinerate damage. There were some huge bursts on that. We've got 7k per tick incinerate. Massive armor breaks. That's what happens when you give Red Goblin a few a little extra boost with some fury buffs. So if you've got a Red Goblin and you have a lot of health potions, it could just be easiest in this quest. Rush special too. Easy peasy. Skip the no choice here. We've got a team we're happy with. For our boss... We have Green Goblin, and I will be bringing in 6-4 Human Torch. His PI is quite low, because for some reason I've never managed to get him awakened, but he really doesn't need it particularly here. We're going to be activating our Flame on, just so we get extra damage, power stings, and so on. Got very lucky I didn't get punished on that heavy attack, I don't know why I threw it. So, there's our first set, and we're just trying to build up our temperature slowly. So there's a second heavy, and we'll be going for one more, just to get that temperature maxed out to 20. Once it's maxed, it stays paused for a little bit. However, any energy damage we take will give us smolders, but also help build our temperature. You can see it dropped to 17, and then it went back up, and we got 5 smolders off that special one, which increases our incinerate damage by 60%. The Nova Flames, as I said, deal more damage than the incinerates. They last longer, they make sure Green Goblin has no block proficiency at all, and they inflict power stings. So they really do quite a lot. So medium, light, medium, medium, light, medium. So that way we can put loads of those Nova Flames on him. If he's regenerating at all, which is when his orange is the same as or higher than the green of his two passives, so he will be now, we can actually also reverse that regeneration using some of our Nova Flames. If we were just using regular incinerates, because I am running the Despair Mastery, that would actually give us slightly more potent reversal. But I'm not here for reversal, I'm here for raw damage. We're up to 14 smolders, which is giving us a lot of extra potency, so we'll just let those tick him down. Just block the special attacks where you need to, don't try and do anything fancy. And here we go, medium, and you can remember that in this fight, everyone's special attacks cost half, so I threw that special too. And by going heavy, medium, light, medium, well, nearly medium, we're almost back, we're back at another special too. So we just need to bait his one out, and then the cycle goes round and round. Here, we need another special out of him, preferably, because that power is a little bit more than I am comfortable with. Throw our special two, but we get power drain the rest of it, so we don't have that to work with. Medium, light, medium, and here I I go for it. So, throw the, our medium, light, medium, throw the striker, go for a nice, long, slow combo, and he falls. That was very risky at the end, but it did what we needed it to. And now, the Red Guardian path. Team for this path is 565 Gladiator, 565 Nick Fury, 6 star rank 3 Colossus, 6 star rank 3 Omega Red, and 7 star rank 1 Gladiator. The plan for this path? Well, it's much simpler than the other path. You kind of just beat them up. You aren't really going to get anything out of your specials because they are power drained and power burnt when, they, when the opponent throws and when you are hit by the specials. So... Yeah, basic attacks and damage over time really are the way to go. Other great options here would have been, say, Angela can hit really hard. 
or maybe champions like Archangel that have really powerful damage over time. Kate Bishop would be another good option, maybe Shuri, and all of them, so on. Actually, she should be great. Maybe I should have brought Shuri. Oh well. But we can see this Red Guardian's already halfway down, and we're just ticking him down with Nick Fury's bleeds. Nick Fury is our boss option, so I won't be pushing him into his second life on the path, though we'd be able to end the fight much faster if we did. I am, however, ever running 5 out of 5 deep wounds, which is really helping Nick Fury here, but it's not hugely important. You can see there when I throw the special 1 that I get that passive weakness on me, and it really, really doesn't do much damage. I might get 3 or 4k damage out of the whole special attack. It's really not particularly noteworthy. Just baiting the special 2 out of Red Guardian, and now with just a couple more big bleeds, he'll be falling pretty rapidly. This is the only fight on the path we use Nick Fury for, as we were saving the rest of his health for the boss. Here's my primary boss counter, with Guardian as backup. So, nothing too difficult there. Up next, we have Rogue, and for her, I believe we are using Gladiator. The defenders on this path are relatively simple, and so don't offer a huge amount. I will also say that I am not well practiced using Gladiator, and this is one of the first proper fights I ever actually took with him, so if you are a Gladiator expert, please don't slate me too hard, but I think I could do an okay job of it. We get our Intimidate on her, beat into the block to build some confidence, go for another heavy attack, now we're unblockable, build more confidence, so we're up to, what's that, 16, so we're going to bait her special too, and because Gladiator is immune to power manipulation, or at least power drain, we don't have to worry about it there, so we get some good damage, Nice uh, heavy tech there. We're unblockable, but we can still beat into her, what is it, Intimidate, there we go. So we're up to our maximum of 24 or 25, and with the extra Fury we get from the node, actually hit pretty hard. So just want to bait the special too. We punish that for some extra damage, because we have enough confidence. And I know with Gladiator you can sort of beat into the opponent whilst they're throwing their specials, but it's not something that I do much of here. I don't quite see it as necessary and I'm not sort of good enough and practiced enough at doing it to get as much out of it as we can but punishing them you at least get one burst of it and so there we go rogue luckily doesn't hit me in the face there and she falls very nicely a much faster fight from gladiator with some very nice base attack and the fact he doesn't get power drained is also very helpful up next we have the defender guardian and I believe we're using gladiator again for this guy we used gladiator a couple of times on this path but I think this is either his last or his second to last fight. We will also be using Colossus at other points as well, because he does a pretty good job too. So, same plan of attack. We get the Intimidate on them. We build the confidence. We try and ignore the lag spikes. Super confident. There we go, we're up to 10. If you're taking this fight and you struggle to deal with Guardian Special 1, it is a good one to worth uh, practice dexing. But you can just block it. It's not ideal, but it does work. It doesn't deal the most damage. The special 2 deals much more if you get hit by it, but again, you can block that one safely enough. Nice uh, unblockable there. So, Dex a special 2, or at least you know, the first part of it. And because I haven't seen it before, let's go for Gladiator's special 3. So we build to our 25 confidence. Just want to bait out, there's the special 1. I do hit into him there to try and see what I could get, but it was about 4,000 damage, and now I'm taunted. And then I missed the parry, so I'm not doing that again. So we're going to be going for our heavy attack, go up blockable, get the intimidate on him, break through block, hit the intimidated, 25, go for a partial dex on the special 2, that was about 5k burst on punish, so now we're on blockable, let's go for our special 3. Nice uppercut, and then I think he smashes him around space for a bit, but I decide to just skip it, and I miscalculated. Guardian is now at special 3, but this is the power of AI manipulation. Or, you know, just spam and heavies, why not? This is some of the luckiest I ever get in a fight, but I decided to leave it in for one simple reason, which is it's really important not to just give up in a fight. I took a big burst of damage there, but we close out the fight with a big heavy attack. He absolutely could have thrown that special three, and he probably should have done, but very simply, we got lucky. We take advantage of it where we can, and we don't quit out, even when things look a bit hopeless. Always push on where possible. Gladiator's last fight, hopefully it'll be a little smoother than the previous one, is this Magneto. And another reason Gladiator was bought for this path is that he is not metal, and many of the other champions we're using are. We shouldn't use Nick Fury here either, because despite the class disadvantage, White Magneto is in fact bleed immune, which makes Nick Fury a very, very slow option. 
One thing we do have to be very careful of is Magneto Special 1, as that very, very fast burst underground is going to have to be something that we try and avoid where we can, a good one also to learn how to dex. So we're just building our confidence, we're up at 16, going to go for another big heavy attack. Bam, nicely unblockable. I should have gone in there when I was unblockable, but didn't. So there we go, we'll go for that again. And here, some very nice damage, that's 15k burst, some really, really nice damage from that special too. The extra fury from the node, helping a little bit. Bam, another big heavy attack, beating into the block. So now we've built up our confidence to 25, go for another one, nicely unblockable. Those incinerates are slowly ticking away in the background. They're not the most potent, but they do last quite a while. So the damage total is pretty good. Go for another heavy into special, some nice burst off that too. And this fight is extremely smooth. We managed to avoid all special one throws. And so we're just going to close it out with some hits into block. Got to remember that incinerates reduce the opponent's block proficiency. So we'll be taking advantage of that as well. Next up, Hawkeye. Relatively simple defender. So we're just going to beat him to death with a big metal boy, aka Colossus. What are my thoughts going into this fight? Well, I'm probably not going to be able to get to my special two because he's just going to keep draining my power. So this is going to be a parry to build armors sort of fight and then throw some big heavy attacks along the way. So it's another parry. We're up to seven armors. Ideally, we'd like, you know, lots, the more the merrier. And up against Bishop next, spoiler alert, I will be using Colossus. We build a lot of armors because our Colossus is awakened. But we'll explain that when we get there. So another big heavy attack. Some crits would be really nice. And this is where maybe a 7-star rank 1 Colossus would have been very nice as well. For that crit stat focus, for some slightly more reliable critical hits. So we're still at 7 armors. And we're just looking for parries, basically. So we're up to 9 now, that's really good. Nice 33.5k crit there. A few more of those, and this fight really won't be lasting much longer. Nice lag spike. 15k total from the heavy attack is really not bad at all. If we think that Guardians were hitting for about... Not Guardian, Gladiator, sorry. Mind fog. Guardians... No, Gladiators were hitting for about 20-something k, and he is significantly higher ranked than Colossus, so 15k is pretty nice with no crits. And that was with crits on Gladiator. Here we go, we're looking for another crit. We're up to 17k now because we've got to 12 armors. So Colossus's signature ability has two main uses. The first one is when a temporary armor expires, it has a chance to become a permanent one. You see there we were at 12 armors, one expired, but we stayed at 12 armors. That was one becoming permanent. The second half we'll see up against Bishop in just a second. And there we go, fight closed out relatively easily. Colossus is an absolute tank, so we barely lost any health as well, because we landed all of our parries. Up next, as alluded to, we have Bishop, and again, we'll be using Colossus. Please do watch the Bishop video in full if you haven't seen it yet, as Bishop is quite a tricky defender, particularly if you don't have the right counters. Colossus is a pretty good counter, though. So, a nice 30k heavy attack to start things off, and we're at 5 armors, now we're up at 6, and the second half of Colossus' signature ability will be coming in very soon. When Colossus is immune to an effect he has a chance to gain an armour up. And you can see here, we're collecting quite a few armour ups as Bishop tries to incinerate us from his special one. Bishop's special one here is really annoying because you can't, well, you can dex it, but you're not going to, most likely. It is possible. But as soon as he gets to 10 prowess, you're going to be eating it like that. So, can you dex it? Yes. Will you? Most likely. Should you? No. If you can block it, block it. That does mean you'll be losing all of your power, though. If you can, push him to special 2, so you don't have to deal with it at all. But with Colossus here, you can see we're up at 20, 21 armors, and we're doing pretty well. We're getting some 13k mediums, and at this point I just need to bait his special 2. I know it's going to be unblockable. Watch the hand go forward, and we're good. This special has no prowess, so it doesn't hit very hard at all. It's not safe to punish the special 1, but I try and do it every single time. That was a 20k heavy attack with no crits. 20 armor ups, crit, no crit. And just one more parry here should be enough. There we go, and a medium to finish him out. So you need a good counter for that bishop, but the rest of the path is relatively straightforward. Energy refill. You've got to love the one gold energy refills on the content creator beta, which is where this is being filmed. Champion swapper. Do we need it? No, we don't. If you need it, use it. You gain nothing by not using it, so just use it. For our boss, we have Rhino, and our primary attacker here will be Nick Fury. What have we got to watch out for in this fight? Well, we've got Power Shield, Bubble Shield, 
something else, and Tantrum. So we've got to watch out that he doesn't go unblockable, and Power Shield means that all of our attacks will do nothing, except our special attacks. So he's up to 10 Tantrum charges, and if I were to knock him down now, I would take, ooh, I'd say about a third of my health as direct damage. But as soon as we can put the right debuffs on him, there we go, Disorient's on, all the charges go away, and we're very safe. The special doesn't deal a huge amount of damage because, you know, it's Nick Fury's special one, but we work with what we can get. This fight is mostly going to be based on bleeds, and we will just be spamming the special one. So, come on, there we go, there's the special two. And we're up at nine bubble shield charges, so we have to be very, very careful. So his next attack, because we're at ten, will be unblockable, whether it hits or not. So whatever he does next, it will say unblockable. There we go, that was unblockable. It didn't hit me, but the charge has been used. See, that one didn't say unblockable. Here, we go for our special two, and we take one Tantrum's burst of damage, which is about 1,500, so not the greatest. But we've got our big uh, internal bleed going, and it seems that because I triggered the internal bleed on a special attack, because I got four bleeds from the special two, that internal bleed, which is the one ticking for, what's that, 1,300 and something? That internal bleed has the power shield damage in it, which is really nice for us. So, we're going for another special one, and I'm starting to get bored of this fight. It's going on, Rhino's going down slowly, we're pretty safe, but we're just bleeding him out. And so part of my mind is just like, well, why not just get hit, die, go into the second life of Nick Fury where he gets his massive permanent fury, and just go about the rest of the fight that way. But I don't want to purposefully die, that seems a bit pointless, so we're just baiting the special two here. I like having Nick Fury's safety net. Yeah, but no, that's a stupid idea. So, in a few hits, we're going to get bored, and we're going to let ourselves get killed. We're going to move into Nick Fury's second life, get the massive Fury, watch the massive bleeds do their thing, and, well, you'll see for yourself in just a moment. So, I think it's about here. I just get a bit bored. I don't know, maybe it's in a moment. About 135 hits, I think. Maybe it's after this special one. That massive fury is going to amp up our bleeds. It's going to amp up. It's going to combine really nicely. Here we go. With our power shield damage on the special one. It's not going to do much because it's Nick Fury's special one. It doesn't hit very hard. But just... Well, you'll see for yourself. So. Our health is slowly draining because that's what it does now. That was 15k off the first hit. That was another bunch of 5k. We're getting 4k per tick. This is only a 5 star Nick Fury. 4k per tick off my bleed. We've now got two Furies, Furies and Power Shield, so we're getting some 6k crits off that uh, Nick Fury special one. If I'd gone for the special two, we'd probably be dead by now. There we go. And that fight was closed down significantly faster in that last third. As always, remember, this is Act 7. You need to move to that final node. Don't quit out here. So, there we have it. Everything you need to know to beat 7.1.2. Coming soon, we have a crystal opening, as you always love those, and we'll have an OG Storm showcase coming next week as well, with some of the highest damage over time potential in the entire game. Stick around for that one, it'll be good. I also have a Discord server, a great place to get specific advice, make suggestions for future video topics, and while I'm awake, I do my best to be there as much as possible. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below, and please do all the YouTube stuff. Thank you, and I will see you next time.